Your message is important to us. Please hold. Your message is important to us. Please hold. Your message is important to us. Please hold. Looking for great value home insurance? Don't go online for an anonymous corporation who takes your money and abandons you. Choose High House, your local insurance company. High House insurance don't pay to be on comparison websites, so your premiums are better value. For a free no obligation quote, call 606 552. High House insurance, local reliable insurance. High Street, Selsey. Hi, and welcome once again to Selsey Internet Radio. My name's Keith Barnes, and the first item on our agenda this week is what's on, and that's our weekly look at some of the things that are going on in and around the village for the coming week. Now, on Monday the 21st, there's a soft play session down at the Selsey Centre, and that's from 9.30 until 11. And also on Monday at the Academy, don't forget there's basketball, and that's in the sports hall, 5 o'clock for 7 to 11 year olds, and 6 p.m. for over 12 year olds. And also on Mondays, that's the first and third Mondays of the month, Selsey Camera Club meet. And if you want more information about that, then you can have a look on their website, which is www.selseycameraclub.co.uk. And on Tuesdays at the Academy, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Youth Dream are running a computer and laptop user course. And on Wednesdays, I believe, at 3 o'clock, an iPad course. So you can get your name down for that. You don't have to be school age. You can be any age you like or any age you want to tell us you are, and, uh, <laughs> and get yourself along there and learn how to operate some of this technology. And while we're on the subject of the Academy, the Academy's looking to develop a gardening club, and it's looking for volunteers. Now, if you feel that you could assist the students in this project, just give the Academy a call on 603 983. Now, also on Tuesdays, from 8 o'clock in the morning, is it really an 8 o'clock in the morning? I guess it must be. Uh, yeah, sells you walkers meet and so if you go along there they'll be gathering at uh, Budgeons at 8 o'clock in the morning and then I guess they go for a walk and also on a Tuesday at the Fisherman's Joy we've got the Ace Poker League and that starts at 7.30 and it costs you just a pound on Wednesday sells you walkers meet once again and this time that's at 3 o'clock in the afternoon at Hillfield Car Park and once again, in the evening, on the Wednesday, at the Fisherman's Joy, we have the Ace Poker League. And that's just a pound, and that starts at 7.30. Now, on Thursday the 24th, there's a meeting of the Christmas Day Lunch Volunteers. And this is at the fire station. You go in through the rear entrance at 6 o'clock. All volunteers are most welcome and much needed, so they're still looking for volunteers, folks. And if you'd like to be part of this fantastic event, and you can't get to the fire station then you can call Danny on 07767 421 297 and he'll give you the rest of the information. And also on Thursday we have the quiz at the Fisherman's Joy and that's £1 per person. Teams are a maximum of eight people and just in case you're not very clever they have cash bingo during the break so you've got a chance to run off with a few bob from that. And moving on to Friday the 25th there's a Macmillan coffee morning but it's in the afternoon. <laughs> it is, yes, it's at Selsey Town Hall from 1.30 to 4.30. And Selsey U3A meet at their monthly meeting, and that's at the Selsey Centre from 2.30. And their guest speaker is Michael O'Leary, and Michael is a professional storyteller. Saturday the 26th of September, now that's a busy old day. We've got the world's biggest coffee morning in aid of Macmillan Cancer Support, and that's at 11am in the marquee at the golf club. That's Golf Links Lane, of course. Also, we have the Cat and Rabbit Rescue Centre Rehoming Day. That's from 12 to 2 p.m. at their Childer Lane Siddlesham Centre. No appointments necessary. You can just turn up there and see if you want to rehome one of their rescued animals. And also, while we're on the Cat and Rabbit Rescue, they're looking for volunteers for their shop, which is down at number 9, the Parade. And if you can help them out with that, then you can pop in and see Sue or Leslie, and they'll give you information on that. Now, we've also got a concert by Tian Symphony, and that's at St Peter's Church, 2pm, in aid of Macmillan Cancer Support. And the tickets are £10, and that's to include tea, coffee and cakes after the concert. And tickets are available on the door, or you can contact Sally on 604104. And to finish off the Macmillan fundraising day there, 
We also have, on Saturday, a darts day at the Lifeboat Inn to raise money for breast cancer. Our random drawn mixed pairs will be done at 4pm and, weather permitting, there will be a barbecue with a grand raffle and a prize auction as well. And that's £5 to enter for the darts. And if you can't play darts, well, you can just come along and support a very good cause. And that's a small selection of the things that will be going on in and around the village for the coming week. That's a rather lovely piece of music there called Acoustic Sun by Chris Martin and Jeff Harvey. Right, we're going across now to Keithy's Kitchen. And this is our first recipe for today. Sticky Lime Chicken. Now this serves four people, and this is what we need. Four part-boned skinless chicken breasts. The grated rind and juice of one lime. One tablespoonful of honey. One tablespoonful of olive oil. One chopped garlic clove, one tablespoonful of chopped fresh thyme, and some pepper to season. And this is what we do. Arrange the chicken breasts in a shallow roasting pan. Then put the lime rind, the juice, the honey, the olive oil, the garlic and thyme in a small bowl and combine thoroughly. Spoon the mixture evenly over the chicken, season with pepper and roast in a preheated oven. 190 degrees centigrade, that's gas mark 5 in old money, for 35 to 40 minutes or until the juices run clear and the chicken is tender. Baste every 10 to 15 minutes during the cooking as the liquid in the pan thickens to give a tasty sticky coating. And you can serve this with boiled new potatoes and salad or some lightly cooked seasonal vegetables. A lovely dish. Bon appetit. And for those of you with a sweet tooth amongst us, our second recipe is for almond slices. And this is what we need. 8 ounces of short crust pastry, 4 ounces of ground almonds, some apricot jam, 2 ounces of ground rice, 4 ounces of caster sugar, 1 egg, 4 ounces of icing sugar and 1 egg white. And we also need some sliced blanched almonds or chopped walnuts for the topping. And this is what we do. Preheat the oven to 190 degrees centigrade or gas mark 5, well that's what you add it on for the lime chicken so if you left it on you're okay then well grease an approximately 7 by 11 inch shallow tin roll out the pastry on a lightly floured surface and make it fit and cover the bottom of the tin spread a layer of jam over the pastry and then mix all the remaining ingredients together in a bowl and spread evenly over the top of the jam layer top this with sliced almonds or chopped walnuts and bake for 20 minutes until pale brown once it's cooled a bit, slice into fingers and then leave it to cool further. Because you don't want to burn yourself with it. Sticky hot jam, not good for you. No. <laughs> Other than that, wonderful. And that's it for the recipes for this week. Now I've got uh, a little bit of useful information for you, which is unusual for me, isn't it? Yes, I know, I'm full of useless information. But there's a couple of bits of uh, 
useful information regarding roadworks that are going to be coming up now on the B2145 from the 22nd to the 24th of September there'll be two way signals by the Trident Business Park while they repair a water leak and also in Siddlesham by Littleton House um, on the same dates the 22nd and to the 24th there'll be two way signals whilst the water leaks repaired there as well now if you'd like to uh, find out more information with regard to planned roadworks and hold-ups if you go on to Selsey Information Exchange's website and look under useful information there's a whole list of them and you might find that uh, in the not too distant future because there's going to be lots of gas mains being uh, replaced in and around Selsey you might find that this is very useful information indeed so just have a look at that that's on the Selsey Information Exchange website now, one piece of good news that we've had this week is that Chichester District Council last week approved the plans for a long-awaited joint community clubhouse in Selsey, including new change in the storage facilities. The plans, which were agreed by the Council on 11th of August, include for alterations and extensions to, to, be, to be made to the Selsey Football Club Pavilion, which will enable new clubhouse facilities to be provided for Selsey Cricket Club and new change in facilities for both clubs. New storage facilities will also be built to replace existing storage garages and containers. The Selsey Football Club works closely with Selsey Seals Football Club to run between them 14 teams, serving 250 players. So obviously that's a lot of use for the clubhouse. And the club have a united coaching scheme aimed at encouraging local players into the first team and have won many individual and team awards at county and regional level. The Selsey Cricket Club has 170 members and runs nine sides, including, of course, the best ladies' side in West Sussex. It has the, uh, the highest award from the England and Wales Cricket Board, namely being a focus club, and provides a rich social life for its members. And while the council had the till open, they decided they'd spend the £13,000 required to do the feasibility study on whether or not Selsey gets its harbour, or haven, as it's going to be called. So we look forward to that and to uh, whatever comments it's going to raise. I wonder if people will be as against that as they were against some of the other projects. Anyway, we could have our own little haven for Selsey and somewhere for the boats to shelter, so that would be a good thing anyway. Right, I thought this week, as for something different, we'd have a bit of a history lesson on Selsey, as a good many of us weren't actually born and bred here, and uh, we we'll probably know the history of the places we came from far better than we do that of Selsey. Let's start with the very basics. We're about seven miles south of Chichester and although there is evidence that the history of Selsey goes back as far as the Romans it's commonly accepted that Selsey was founded by the Saxons in the early 6th century and the Saxons were rampaging all over in the south of England and they carved out a kingdom called Sussex or the Kingdom of the South Saxons and they founded a settlement called Seals Egg or Seals Island. Now they were a bit of a raucous bunch of the Saxons and at first initially they were pagans but in the 7th century along came our old mate St Wilfred in, who lived between 634 and 709 and he converted them to Christianity and he made that his calling in life to go around Sussex converting people to Christianity. In 681 he built a monastery and a cathedral at Selsey and he lived here until 686 but in 1075 it was decided that all bishops should live in town so the bishop moved from Selsey to Chichester. Now at the time of the Doomsday Book, so we're moving on through 400 years, in 1086 Selsey had a population of about 160 to 170. Now that would seem tiny to us but settlements were quite a bit smaller in those days and by the standards of the time Selsey was quite a large village and it was owned by the Bishop of Chichester. Now, through the centuries, Selsey was just a quiet village, and that's just how I love it. And some of the villagers made their living from farming, and some from fishing, and, and of course, as we spoke about before some weeks ago, some of them made it from smuggling as well. That was quite common in the area. And most of the time it did very well, except for it was subject to uh, quite a bit of flooding. Now, in more modern times, in the 1800s, Selsey population had grown to 564. Now that's from 1075. It had a few hundred, or 
less than 200. 800 years later, it only had 564. But it was still a large village for its, you know, for its time, anyway. By 1851, it had, so it's only 50 years, it had taken nearly 800 years to get to 564. And then in 50 years, it had doubled and it had gone up to around the 1,000 mark. And by 1900, it was over the 1,200 mark. So you could see all of a sudden it was becoming the place to get to and the place to live and um, was growing faster than a lot of places. And in 1820, the Selsey Windmill was built. Now this replaced an older building, but um, the newer one, the one that's there now, was built in 1820. And of course in 1861, we got our first lifeboat. And moving on later in the 1800s, in 1897, a railway line was built from Chichester to Selsey and it was called the Selsey Tramway. And of course, the minute the railways move in, that encourages growth, so the village started to grow even more. Unfortunately, or some would say, the Selsey Tram closed in 1935. There were quite a few stations, about seven or eight stations between Chichester and, and Selsey, and some of the stops were even private, they were privately owned, so you couldn't get off there if you wanted to. The, the one at Hunston was public, you get off there. Ho Farm Halt, that's private, and that was just for the farm owner. Cholder, well that was the closest station to Siddlesham Village, and the access was over a private farm road, and the company, the, that's a railway company, paid the landowner £2 a year for the way leave, to, for the right to, to use the access. Then there was Mill Pond Halt, that was opened in October, 1910 and closed in May 1911 so it didn't stay open long but it was reopened again in July 1928. Siddlesham station and that station was closed from December 1910 until June 1911 while the track level was raised about four feet. Then it was Ferry Butt or Ferry Siding Halt. Then there was Golf Club Halt and that was private. Then there was Selsey Bridge, the main road crossed the line here, that's the road coming in, and the only bridge on the line, and I think you actually can still see the route of where the train went under there. And after 1911 there was a private siding put in there for the brickworks, and then Selsey Town, and that was renamed Selsey from 1911, and the engine shed was located there with a good siding and a run around loop, so you could turn around again. And then Selsey Beach opened on 1st of August 1898 and closed in October 1904. We're not sure, but the train service there may just have operated in the summer. But uh, there was a simple run-around loop and a single platform, once again, to allow the train to turn around. In 1910, there were seven trains each way on weekdays and one extra on Mondays, and three on Sundays. And the journey time for the seven and a quarter miles was half an hour. And in 1919, 1920-ish, it carried about 102,000 people. In, in, that, in 1919, as a year, it carried 102,000 people. Now, bizarrely, according to the figures available, in 1919, it carried 102,292 passengers and it took 3,912 pounds. Now, that works out about 9.5p old money, which in today's terms would work out about 4 pence per passenger and bizarrely in 1933 where it only carried 21,088 passengers and took 427 pounds that works out about four and a half old pence so whether they tried to drop the fares to attract more passengers or what is not really clear but uh, it's certainly what happened and probably led to the demise of the railway but unfortunately in the 1920s and early 30s the buses came along and of course they man ran more regularly, and they probably run even more regularly still nowadays. And by 1933, the tramway only carried 21,000 people in the year. And two years later, that was it. It was forced to close. As I say, it was probably a sad thing, but it's a romantic notion more than anything. There is nothing wrong with the bus service we've got backwards and forwards now. It certainly runs more frequently than the Selsey tram ever did. Anyway, as Selsey grew, of course... The infrastructure had to go with it. Now we even nowadays, when planning permission or planning applications go in, as they've done recently, the first shout that goes up is the infrastructure won't take it. Well, of course, they'll do what they did 
100 years ago, 150, 200 years ago, even more. As things grow, well, the infrastructure has to grow with it. And so prior to the First World War, the work began on digging drains and sewers and putting those in, and the, the infrastructure was beginning to get set up. And in 1924, Selsey got its first electricity supply. And in 1927, it also got its first professional fire brigade. So early part of uh, the 1900s was a time of big expansion in Selsey. And in 1913, we got the cinema. Unfortunately, it closed in the 1950s. But it's reopened recently for several productions. And it's been well attended, I have to say. Then, unfortunately, of course, along came the... Uh, the First World War, and sadly during the First World War, Selsey lost a lot of its men, and the war memorial was put up in 1920. Now, of course, early in the 20th century, although it was growing, Selsey was still a village, but in the later 20th century, the population of Selsey grew very rapidly, and Manhood Secondary School opened in 1965. However, Selsey wasn't without its problems, and, and, and even more recently when we had a tornado in 1998 and that damaged over a thousand buildings and I'm not sure if it still happens but the children at the schools were taught what to do in the case of a tornado so whether they're taught to duck under their desks or what I'm not quite sure but it became part of the school's teacher training for the kids to keep them safe and of course even more recently in 2008 we had severe storms and flooding but despite that it's still growing, as we know. Um, it's a bit of a testament to, to the place that so many people want to come and live here. Um, I think the population now is around 12,000, thereabouts. So, as you can see, since the beginning of the last century, the population of Selsey has exploded and it continues to grow. Anyway, that's a little look at the history of Selsey. And um, Selsey does have a history society, I believe. And there's an awful lot of historical information about Selsey available on the internet, so just Google it, as they say. There's a wealth of information there. One particular site that I will mention that I, I just did have a look at, and uh, it's more about the World War I era and, and what happened to people from Selsey during World War I or people that went to f fight and didn't come back and those that did come back. And that website is selsey 57 Dot org dot uk and they've also got a facebook page so you can look on there and that's selsey 57 on facebook some fantastic information on there really is so have a look at that anyway i hope you enjoyed this week's little insight into some of the history of selsey and i hope you delve into find out an awful lot more because i promise you there is an awful lot more to find out and it's all interesting stuff anyway thanks for listening and uh, see you again soon weather report well it looks like we could be in for a wet start to the week <clears throat> monday there's a 80 percent chance of rain high of 16 degrees tuesday a 50 percent chance of rain with a high of 15 degrees and then wednesday brightens up and there's only a 10 percent chance of rain with a high of 18 degrees but thursday showers probably 40 percent chance of some rain 17 degree high Friday, sunshine, only a 10% chance of rain, 17 degrees. And on Saturday, the same again, only 10% chance of rain and a high of 18 degrees. So that's the weather for the coming week. And it uh, doesn't look too bad for this time of the year, really. And that's it from me. It's uh, left for me only to say thank you to producer John Fletcher and from me, Keith Barnes, Wishing you a very pleasant weekend. See you again next week. Bye-bye now.